Black made back, white seats, black piping. Remind me of Paul McCartney and Mike fighting. The six too long, the curtains are drawn. Perfectly like a Picasso, Rembrandt's in <laughs> You feel that? All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Maybach Conversations. And today, this man don't need no introduction, but we got the boss with us, Marcus Barney, M500. As you know, what's, what's up, brother? Good? Man, what's good, boss? How I'm you blessed. feeling today, man? Man, I'm feeling godly, man. We in all white, man. <laughs> yes, you know, sir. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, some it's light. Feel, man. It's, it's some light. Mm-hmm. Now, I just want to appreciate you for blessing the podcast. I know your your time is valuable. That's you know, so good. I know when you're rich like that, you know. You ain't got time for small people like us, you know man, what I'm saying? Come on, man. Y'all been, you've been getting to a long time, man. This is it's a good conversation. Man. I'm in good company. Already, you know it's a blessing, man. Mm-hmm. So for y'all that don't know, this is uh, Him500 on Instagram. He's the CEO of Recession Proof. He's part of the circle of CEOs, uh, serial entrepreneur. I mean, what, what am I missing, man? Let the people know what you're doing. Man, I got a biz owner emporium, one of the uh, premier workspaces in Atlanta for entrepreneurs. Uh, what else? I got Vomos, the travel company to do all your private jets and, and yachts and luxury travel needs, concierge. Um, man, you name it, man. It's, it's a little bit <laughs> of everything. Everything. Little bit One of everything. stop shop. You got you got classes, programs, all the recession kind of- proof. So that's the the learning, uh, my learning, my university, my online learning program platform. Okay, cool. Yeah. So if y'all don't know, he he can make you a millionaire. Man, that that mansion is crazy, bro. That, y- y'all saw the mansion we pulled up to, man. That That's mm-hmm. a blessing to have something like that, bro. Yo, listen, man, I'm one of the ones, man. I ain't going to never tell somebody what they can't do. I'm going to show you what you can. That's 100%. just what we stand on. You know 100%. I mean? And congratulations. So so to start the show off, we're going to pop a bottle to your success. You know, yeah, normally we do a little champagne, but... uh. I done seen you at Neo party, so I had to pull yeah. out some of the Don Julio rep or something. We could do the, we could do the rep. <laughs> no, Should have did Hennessy. Nah. Ah, uh, <laughs> bro, boy, you would've took it back with the Hennessy. Yo. All right, oh, hold on, let me get you right. There you go, brother. And I appreciate it, no problem. You got me on the rep straight, too. Man, straight, Ooh. no no chaser. You know, I normally I do get a chaser, man, but I, I didn't put one in the refrigerator, so. Nah, we all good. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit, I'm about to pick that up. Come on. Cheers, brother. Cheers. All right. All right. Oh, that's, pretty good. that's pretty good. So, all right, brother. I, a lot of people already know who you are. You've been doing your thing for a while. How did how did you get? Well, first let's talk about where you from and how did you grow up? Um, from Stockton, California, grew up single mom. Lost my dad um, to prison at ninety six. Mm, so crazy thing that. is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ain't gonna be sorry about shit. I'm blessed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. You know, without that, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Mm. He get ready to come home. He actually come home this year. Mm. Um, in the next few months, he be coming home. So, you know, I was raised, you know, by my mom. Pops in jail. Uh, moms was an entrepreneur, though. You know, it ain't all. Everybody like to say, it was just fucked up, da 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 Like, it was, we had rough years and rough patches, but we had good patches. You know what I mean? My of mom course. went and graduated, got her degree, went and got her master's. Oh, that's um, major. Witnessed my mom, you know, us renting, getting evicted, getting kicked out of the house. We was renting, mm. falling homeless. But we lived with my aunt, not homeless on the streets in the shelter. But then, mm. you know, seeing my mom buy her first house, then seeing my mom buy a duplex, then seeing my mom build a, a, a eight thousand square foot house. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Before the crash, and then, you know, we we it's ups and downs. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Then, to the crash happened, and we got to build everything back up. But you know, it's a blessing we're here. Now. Of course. So she she got into real estate. Yeah, yeah. She yep. was an agent, builder, investor. Investor. Okay. Yeah. That's lit, man. To be able to have that. And I, I can relate to you, man. We grew up, lights getting cut off. Uh, I got evicted before, you know, a couple mm-hmm. times. I even got evicted when I first moved to Atlanta. So, yeah, so I understand that. But it's times like that that make us who we are. Hundred percent. You know, we know we don't want to go back to that. So if we you can. ain't living in Atlanta and struggle when you first got here trying to figure it out. The party scene kick your ass. You going out <laughs> drinking, partying yeah. every night, mismanaging the money. Right, man. Listen, man. You know. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, a, a tongue and groove night, uh, uh, take your water bill, Bro. man. Yo, you know what? I ain't paying the gas this month. Yo, no, compound. Compound. <laughs> <laughs> compound, definitely. Yo. Guys, you know how important professional photography and videography is in real estate, and I take mine very seriously. 
the only company I trust is Visually Sold, and that's visuallysold.com. They have the best photographers. They've been shooting all of my photography videos for my real estate projects for years. Not only that, they have a next day delivery, instant booking online, and the quality is outstanding. Get your game up today and get 10% off your first photo or video shoot by using my code, which is Trey, T-R-E-Y, at visuallysold.com. And that is, again, Trey, at visuallysold.com they will take care of you make sure you tell them that i sent you so i can get some future discounts on all of my stuff in the future all right guys visuallysold.com check them out they will not disappoint one of the most professional services in the business all right i guarantee that now let's get back to the show bro i ain't gonna lie i, I used to be on the list me and my boys would be on the free before 12 list mm -hmm. and we'd be struggling trying to get yep. to the club free before 12. I'll be in the club with a $60 budget, bro. Yep, bro. And, and go and go over it. Be tough. I'm telling you, I didn't have it where my gas got cut off. And I didn't have to, uh, my gas cut off, so I ain't got no hot water at the crib. I'm showering at the gym. Damn. Boy, you want to talk about being in shape? When you got to shower at the gym, you got to be there. Yeah. Bro, I had 30 days of straight fitness. I was getting it in. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Couldn't take a hot shower at home. But, you know, young, learning the city just... It, it was so demanding. The city was so demanding. And I think that's one of the things that I looked at and I learned in business. I tell people all the time, like, look, this should be demanding. Yeah. Like, you know, the lifestyle, the life you want to live is demanding. So if you don't learn how to, like, compromise and balance it and, and make sacrifices, sometimes you take an L, you make a mistake. But, yeah. you know, that should just build character. Of course. Of course. So as a kid growing up, what what type of lifestyle did you did you always picture the lifestyle you have now that, that that's the way you'll become or... Did you even, what, what was your thoughts as a kid growing up? What did you want? Dog, you know, I look back at my pictures as a kid. I always been the same person. Okay. Watch on, mm -hmm. chain, mm -hmm. uh, watch, chain, clothes. Like, you know, for my sixth grade, seventh grade pictures, like I'm in full mecha outfits. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. First of the Little chain. Like, you know, I always carried it like that. That's That's been a part of who I was. Um, so for me, I always wanted nice things to a certain degree. Didn't know this level even existed. Mm. You know what I mean? We, we, when I grew up, Benz's was the highlight and mm -hmm. 5.0s. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, 100%. you know, I'm from California. I'm stock in California. So the, the, the people in my neighborhood, like old schools, things like that, that's what we glorified and was the, the signal of that statement. Like, yo, this is why I made it. Yep. So that yeah. was that was that was it. But <clears throat> as I grew, ended up moving here, my vision got widened, and now you know you start to see like, nah, it's not moving to, you know, Spanos moving to three hundred, four hundred thousand dollar homes, mm -hmm. eight hundred thousand dollar homes. It's like, nah, 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 nah. nah. It's five million dollar homes, mm. six million dollar homes out here in Atlanta that look a little bit different. Mm -hmm. you, it ain't a Mercedes, ain't the hierarchy. Right. It's Rolls Royces. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. And this is ran. It's, 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 I mean, it's not random, but it's 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 okay. It's accepted. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not something that's rare. It's like it's people out here. My circle operate in that level and at that capacity. So yeah. Shout out to the circle of CEOs, man. Y'all y'all yeah. doing your thing. I, I I appreciate it. I see it. I Brothers it. coming together for a common goal. Mm -hmm. That's called a mastermind alliance, man. So y'all creating a a great example. And yeah. I gotta take a drink to that just cause. Nah, man, and my brothers. So, all right, so you, you knew you wanted a luxury lifestyle. You didn't know that you would be having this type of lifestyle growing up. Where was that transition that, that kicked in where you like, man, fuck it, I'm not finna settle and just for the bins or the half a million dollar house. I'm gonna go all out and get this McLaren, this Rolls Royce, this stupid mansion in Buckhead. Where, 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 when did that kick in when you knew you wanted to be the upper echelon man i moved out here with my i moved out here and then my best friend moved out here yeah my best friend committed suicide damn i'm sorry he to hear that laid on the martyr station at Lindbergh. no he didn't yeah laid on the tracks at martyr oh, at Lindbergh on the on the, on the on the train tracks committed suicide oh my god so sorry to hear that bro nah you know and that's that point when i remember when we came like us being able to stack ten thousand was like Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. That's the minimum. We got to like have like twenty five thousand cash. Mm -hmm. Getting out here, this life ate us up. 
but we didn't know nothing about credit. We ain't know nothing about financial literacy. We ain't know nothing about, like, we didn't know a lot of these things was possible. So we seeing these families, we seeing everything. And it's like, okay, when he did that, you know, he went broke out here. Mm. And I'm like, nah, like at that point I look like, nah, I gotta, I gotta have everything that this city owes. Mm. You know what I mean? Like everything that, every, everything that is hanging in front of us, that's driving us, that's, tormenting us you know making us realize we broke and it was a rude awakening like you ain't got it mm. you know what i mean and i'm like nah like i'm gonna get it mm -hmm. and so it's like it, it at that point it's like look it was i came back on the on the flight home it was i never forget i'm looking out the window i'm crying and mm. nip said get rich or get sent to the police station mm. i said well there it is niggas. it's by any means necessary we're gonna go figure it out let's get it 100 mm -hmm. percent. Mm -hmm. so your first move to financial freedom, because uh, I know you had some jobs. Your first entrepreneur business that propelled you to success, what was that? My real estate license in 06. You got your real estate license? Get the yeah. heck out of here. Yeah, I got my real estate license in 2006, <laughs> California. What? So, got my real estate license, that's what taught me credit repair. Damn. Yeah, but then propelled me to success at 16, um, I did telesales. So, mm. my first job was telesales. Telemarketing. Yeah, so I used to do sales over the phone. So, when I got into real estate, I ain't had no, no hold back. I ain't scared of nothing. I talk to anybody. Exactly. You teach me the game. I'm, I'm willing to communicate. I'm willing to go. Right. So, that's realistically what propelled it. It started from there. Of course, it's it's a it's a a, a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. But it, within that roller coaster, I learned a lot of moments and 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 learned how to respect different aspects of life because I started seeing black men that were respected. I started mm -hmm. learning how to do business, learning contracts. Like this was my awakening to like adult world and coming out of the hood mm. and seeing people in suits and seeing men in suits and then I got to see the reality that just because a man is professional he take care of his family because he has a nice home mm -hmm. dresses well is well kept that he's not just like us mm. and I realized that because once we would get off work they cracking jokes going out to eat they have a drink I see that they act like my own mm -hmm. you act just like the niggas in the hood y'all talk about each other y'all talk about women <laughs> and I said oh it's not a difference. Mm. And I said, I thought it was a difference. I thought I had to act to become somebody else. Mm. If I wanted to be a professional, it was mm -hmm. like, nah, you you're, you can be a professional. It don't mean you have to let go of who you are and where you really come from. Mm -hmm. And don't ever change. That's why I don't change. Like I still wear the clothes I want to wear. I can throw a suit on, I can throw a sweatsuit on. However, I'm still well respected because of my mind and my intellect, and I understand that. You got so it. I ain't never had to change. I'll wear a bust down watch, I'll wear a plain Jane watch, it's up, it depends on how I feel. And I see how you're feeling today. What you got, the Richard Million? Yeah, man, some, you know, recession proof blue. We Something like. Listen, we, <laughs> so listen, I'm being the president of greatness, man. You know what I mean? I had to, you know, we're going to operate in it. Is that the one your wife bought you? Yep. Yeah, I saw that, man. That's mm -hmm. dope, man. Yeah. Congrats on, on the success and the marriage. We're going to get into that talk in a minute. Yeah. So, so credit repair. So, was it real estate? Because I know you said you got your license, but credit repair is what really got you to the bag. I learned credit repair because as the rookie agent, little dude, eighteen, I would bring, I would go rope people in, mm -hmm. but he would have to do the deals and close them because if they just wasn't comfortable dealing with this mm, with the young dude. Yeah. So okay. I'm like, I'm like, all right, cool. So he would teach me. He taught me how to do credit repair, and mm -hmm. so I'm doing. Um, I'm doing a loan prep on the front end, and I'm, I'm kind of setting everything up, doing the paperwork, but then those who don't qualify, I'm doing the uh, the credit repair. Mm. So he didn't taught me all the game on credit repair, like, okay, you bring them in, but if they need credit, we still got other ways to monetize, whether they buy or not. Because right. I'm going getting everybody. I'm putting out yard signs. I'm at the, the colleges doing things. I'm I'm, right. I'm in the streets. I'm outside. Hustling. So he like, okay, you keep bringing in the leads, but... Some of these people need credit repair. You bringing in, you know, it ain't you ain't qualifying the clients. Mm. You know what I mean? You just mm -hmm. you just bringing them in. Mm -hmm. Well, you figure it out. You teach me what we do. So I started learning credit repair. He taught me the credit repair system there. So at that point, I had all my documents. So when I moved here, went through things. When I got, when I started, I was like, you know what? I need to do help figure out a different way. I was working at Wells Fargo, and I'm like, yo, these people can't qualify for the bank products. Mm. So I said. Man, let me see. I can start doing credit repair. Mm -hmm. Started that, it was over. Mm. I went right. I went literally went into my file cabinet and got them old ass documents. Mm -hmm. Found them. Was like, oh, started looking at it. Then I started researching. Then I started studying and learning the game and just learning how it worked. Mm. And from there, it was just an uphill battle. Mm. 
You still do credit repair to this day? No, 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 no. Let that go. Yeah, I, I educate people on how to uh, do it themselves. Gotcha. It's at a point now where you know, I learned that it's 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 a it's a, a, a large it's a learning curve. Mm -hmm. But when you when you learn it, it's 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 better for people to learn it. Mm -hmm. And for me, if I do it for you, mm -hmm. then I'm responsible for your mishap. Mm -hmm. When you fucked up. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And nobody gotcha. want to say, like, yo, it's my misstep. Yeah. Don't, you're not putting, I, too many people not finna put their burdens on me. That gotcha. was one of the bad things. Like, gotcha. I ain't taking that burden. Yeah, I hear that business a little stressful. People blowing you up. They don't see their results in time. Yep. Calling your phone. Yep. But it's, but it's definitely a bag. And I, I know some very successful credit repair people. Yeah. So, so as far as real estate, did you continue that? Or you? It was 2006. And you so I got me a couple checks, mm -hmm. and then it crashed. I lived in Stockton, California. That was the worst. Mm. That was the worst point, the worst place for the foreclosures and, 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 and uh, the market crash. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that's and the market crashed like 2008, so you pretty much was an agent for two years, and you was like, the hell with that after that. It was done. I started doing loan modifications yeah. and stuff like that, but these people is now cussing me out because I'm having to fix their phone, fix their loans, and I'm like, damn, I just got paid from this. Yeah. So it just felt weird for me to be like, yo, I just made money mm. from selling y'all home, and now we making money again for modifying the loan that we put y'all in. Mm. It ain't sit right with me. Mm. So then, you know, I'm like, you know what? I came to a family reunion out here, and um, it was over. Yeah. I seen Atlanta and was like, what is this? Mm -hmm. New opportunity. Yep. And then here, people of our color are really doing big things and they actually work with we work with each other yeah and help bring each other up mm -hmm. it's not like that in a lot of cities so atlanta yeah, is definitely, definitely one of those places um but that's amazing so you moved here in what 2010 2009 okay got it yeah yep and and came straight into doing the credit repair and no 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 i came in doing i i ran the online sales for movie stop um, doing online sales for Movie Stop. Then I started doing stuff on Craigslist. I started doing, <laughs> I was doing cleaning gutters and different odd jobs off of Craigslist. I used to sell mm. Air Force Ones. Mm. I used to do cell phone repair, fixing cell phones, Damn. screens. Had a cell phone kiosk in the mall, had a Boost Mobile store. Yeah, hustling. Nah, yeah, it just developed and grew. You know what I mean? I didn't work, fell off and worked in a warehouse. Mm -hmm. Oh, Atlanta, I had a... I grew up here. You know what I mean? Like gotcha. I literally, I literally developed and grew into a man here. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, so what I got from that, <clears throat> you gotta try a lot of different avenues to achieve success. I mean, you gotta, if you a hustler, you a hustler because a lot of times people may be broke, but it's because they allow themselves to be broke. Like you just said, you goddamn got a kiosk, you doing this, you doing that. You got these multiple hustles going to try to get to mm -hmm. where you need to be in life. Yeah. Now, you know, one of the things is, right, mm -hmm. is lack of experiences. Experience is the greatest teacher in life. And anything with anybody, those who are greatest have great experiences. They have great experiences within life. And it's not every, every experience that's a great experience is not a win. Mm. Me doing roofs was one of the greatest experiences because I learned how to navigate and do different things. It was odd jobs, but I was learning how to work online and setting up systems where I was getting gigs off of Craigslist and then going out and, and actually doing them. So I was trying to line up two or three jobs in a, in a day. Mm -hmm. And like, how much time do I got? Can I take somebody with me? So it kind of taught me like project management skills and how to manage different projects. And so I may not have been making a lot of money, mm -hmm. but guess what? One dude had a shed full of goddamn shoe cleaner. He had a shoe cleaning business, went out of business, had a, a thing full of shoe cleaner. And that's what lit, I got that and matched that with Air Force Ones and started selling them. And that's what mm. took me into selling Air Force Ones, <laughs> right? So, mm -hmm. so then I started going to the flea market buying fake Air Force Ones. <laughs> I, I did that too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I did selling that the too. fake Air Force Ones. Right. Get what you got for twenty five dollars? Yep, twenty five. Sold them yep. like fifty, sixty. Man, I had them. I had them bundled up. <laughs> I was getting for eighteen. So I was eighteen, Damn. and then I would go sell them for fifty, mm -hmm. sixty a pop. And but I would put the shoe cleaner with them. Mm. So then I would give him free shoe cleaner. What well, dude gave it to me? Mm -hmm. Then I I was printing. I went went crazy. Going crazy I, out the trunk. Yep. I had yeah. a van. I had a van, and I would stack them all in there when I would get up. And then that would be another project management. It's like okay, I would get all my sales for the day. Who need what? And then as I'm driving, I looked and seen who was in what city. Mm -hmm. I mean, what part of Atlanta? I'm driving everywhere. I'm in I'm in Marietta all mm. the way to Decatur and mm. uh, Jonesboro, like you name it. So mm -hmm. I would have to 
figure my loop out. Mm -hmm. But these are things like I may not have been making a lot of money, but these things contributed to my success as a businessman because it, it taught me how to compartmentalize my business and how to actually set things up and put things in perspective of yeah. like how to operate yeah. business operations how like I started bringing on people paying people realizing that the money ain't all mine mm -hmm. I can make more money if I give other people some mm. and so those things and when I look at life is like those are experiences that I can never take back that most people if you don't try something if you don't go out on the limb and and take a risk and you know realize like look the learning experience is the biggest lesson it ain't yeah. even the win when you make money it's the things you learn along the journey mm. and I didn't learn so much that's what put me here now mm. you know what I mean like even with relationships like it's the only reason I'm successful is because I understand how to maintain good relationships mm. man you intelligent brother so did any books did you read any books that help attribute it to your success um, or you just nah, yeah, you, you know, you 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 read. I, one of my my the crazy thing is that the books, letter. One of the books that started me out on my reading journey is, and it's one thing that I always go back to. I like the foundation is that Hill Harper wrote letters to a young brother, mm -hmm. and there was just a lot of things that related to me that always inspired me. It's a lot of things that have taught me a lot of things, but that just it it, it related to my life as a young man, and it prepared me like okay, the things to expect. Mm. No, like get ready to expect the world to come at you mm. I was 18 years old and when I read that book I was like okay it's a, I, I gotta deal with the world now and but I have to deal with it it's yeah. not my mama it's not my, my broker it ain't my coaches it ain't none of that it's me mm -hmm. and it's things that I'm, I gotta realize and that, that was my first thing of realization and then you know of course you know it's a lot of other books that I read but that one was the foundation like to get me ready for the world mm. that related to me it's Hill Harbor Hill Harper yeah Hill Harper yeah what's the name of the book letters to a young brother letters to a young brother yeah I never heard of that one yeah yeah it's Hill Harbor's letter to a young brother and that was um that was my first book and that was one of the things that just kind of made it help I feel like it helped prepare me mm -hmm. you know to kind of start accepting my journey in the manhood mm -hmm. gave you the confidence you needed yep. to know that you can accomplish whatever you put your mind to and that I ain't the only one that's gonna go that's going through the same the things the way I felt mm -hmm. you know what I mean like mm -hmm. I was the only one that was going through trials and tribulations and, and going through troubles finding itself and you know trying to you know scared you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like as a, as a man, young man, you come out here like you're scared. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, we don't look that and embrace our fear. Yeah. It's like, you know, with me, I understand like these things like looking, saying, I got to go figure out how to move into my own house. I got to build a family. I got to make money, all of these things. And like, what am I going to do? Even if I'm doing OK, it's still it's still fearful because you're walking into something you never did before. and You don't know what's there. Right. You know what I mean? And a right. lot of times we don't we don't acknowledge that. And it's OK to acknowledge like, yo, it's okay to be scared of some shit. Like, mm -hmm. it's okay to deal in fear and, mm -hmm. and when you don't know. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my things is like, I've always accepted like my flaws. I always accepted my weaknesses because I know my strengths and I bask in those, but I also like to identify them into my internal self of like, yo, what you scared of? Mm -hmm. Like, is do this shit put a little fear in you? What's the fear side that make you kind of like, ooh? Because mm -hmm. that's what bring the dog out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. that's what I'm at. Wherever I'm, my fear is at, I know my great points. Mm -hmm. I know I can communicate. I know I can go out here, work, and I can build relationships. I can get money. But what's the scary part? Mm. That's where I'm at. Mm. You know what I mean? Would you say, well, so what would you say some of your flaws are or bad habits do, do you, or, or something that you feel like you can work on? Because outside looking in, everything looks perfect you know what I'm saying you got you got the mansion you got the family you got the swag you got the the clothes the cars jewelry what what is it what's some of the things that you see yourself working on that you should be improving on so myself you know time one internally with my kids mm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. like developing as as I'm developing them like I want to be a lot I don't get to spend as much time with them as I would like to. Mm -hmm. We get a, we have a lot of great opportunities, a lot of things that we do and experiences, but there are certain things that I look at and I, and I look at like my oldest is her public speaking, the way that she speaks, her confidence when speaking that I want to improve on. And gotcha. I feel like, you know, when I see that, it's like, okay, that's me lacking mm -hmm. where I need to improve. So, you know, that's one thing, mm -hmm. um, just me being there because I'm, I allow my career to pull me so much, mm -hmm. so many things, so many different businesses, so many different moving parts of my life. Mm. Um, I'm spread thin. Gotcha. The only part that really mattered that the most to me that I'm spread thin on is like, you know, with my kids. So that's one part. Um, 
<clears throat> another thing is that you know being empathetic um being empathetic to others mm. is one of my things as well like you know i went through a lot so when i but i realized is that with my maturity with my experiences i can tell people what to do and identify their problems even if they don't realize it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and so because when they don't realize it it's like yo i'm, I'm identifying something that I see from experience, mm -hmm. but it's hard for them to grasp it because they not in my shoes. Mm -hmm. So when I see people doing certain things, like I see somebody, I tell you, I tell you, entrepreneur are gonna lose as soon as they post. Um, strangers will support you more than your own family will. Mm -hmm. Nigga, you lost already. Mm -hmm. I already could tell you your mind in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. So you starting out the gate and you trying to go. Okay, cool. When you first launch a business and you you hyped up and you put too much emphasis on the beginning before it's actually operating and running, mm. that's 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 kind of a recipe for, for loss. Because mm -hmm. guess what? When when it when it when it pop and you expecting all the support to come and it don't come, you get you get you get you clam yeah. up. Yeah. And and you don't go. So I know a lot of things and I tell people like ways to do things. And one thing is like when I tell somebody something, I explain to them like. I'm not wasting my fucking time on it, like, mm -hmm. and and it's like, okay, I got to be more empathetic because sometimes I can be a little mean or a little rude. Yeah, you know, I had a conversation. Somebody lost some money before, it was in a bad deal, and I'm like, okay, well, whatever you did to get in that deal, do it again because that deal done. Mm. Fuck, we sitting here talking about it for. I didn't talk to you about this twice. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, right. it, what's your plan to move forward? And like, well, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, nah, I'm not trying to hear that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm no. not. I don't live there. So I don't live in the same moments and things like that. Mm -hmm. I don't dwell in moments. I don't dwell in the negative. If, if you take a loss, you take a loss. Right. Whatever you did to get into the position to take the loss, do that shit again and then, and then don't lose next time. Mm. And so, but I'm not really empathetic. One of my biggest flaws is like my empatheticness to people because I know like, if I could tell myself, nigga, you had to, you had to go through hell and, 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 and take extreme measures to get this weight off of you, when your lazy ass knew at 240 you need to lose 20 pounds to get to 220. Right. When you got to 260 you knew. When mm. you was at 280 you knew. Mm. Nigga, when you got to 300 you knew. You let your ass get to 360 fucking pounds, mm. and you ain't cut, and you ain't, and, and and now it's to a point where your life is on the line. Mm. That shit your fault. Mm. <clears throat> I can identify and go into that with me. Mm -hmm. Oh man, if I'm if I'm on my ass like that, mm -hmm. I can't I can't do it. So I don't have that empathetic side, and I know that's one of my. It's my strong side for me, but it's one of the things that I look at. Like, I want to be better with other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it is what it is, though, because at the same time, you're not sugarcoating it. Mm -hmm. You know, anybody that's dwelling on a problem, that that's the wrong mentality to have anyway. Like you said, once it doesn't happen, you talk about it for five or ten minutes, clear your thoughts on it, and then you move on. Because the more you stay with it, the more you're going to keep feeling that feeling of, oh, I lost and all that shit. Mm -hmm. Fuck it. You ain't got to look at it as a loss. Look at it as a lesson learned. Now you know not to take that route or deal with that person again. Once it's gone, it's gone. Exactly. Once, it's, once it's over, it's over. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's over. Right. Once something is over, it's over. It's one thing is that you got to be able to pick up and move on. But my thing, you know, and that's that's the thing that I, I get it, but I'm built like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what happened. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever going on in my life, like, I'm still going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Bro, I got arrested for uh, speeding and shit, super speed. We got a cop going down 400, goddamn doing 180 miles an hour. My wife scared to death. Damn. Shit, I'm all right. <laughs> Wish I had two pairs of socks on. Shit, I've been here before. <laughs> been here. I'm like, man, God damn. But she don't know. Like, she like, why you la like you laughing and shit? I'm laughing. I didn't see wife and Lucci come through this motherfucker. I'm in here. Then talking, you know, you start to learn, switching niggas sound with y'all. I hear on the weekend too, so it was a bad time. And so I'm, but I'm like, I'm okay no matter what. Mm -hmm. My nigga, I go from a thirty thousand dollar bed to sleeping in a three man cell, mm -hmm. and I'm on the floor. It's a Mexican shit by my motherfucking feet at three a.m. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I still get up, figure it out. Okay, nigga, I'm not fit to bitch. I'm not fit to. I'm not gonna break. I'm not. not this is what it is. I'm here. Right. Nigga, right. I'm here. Right. I'm not folding. This is. I, I can't change it. Exactly. If I panic, then what? What mm -hmm. I'm gonna do? Cry? Mm -hmm. Man, I can't do that. Like so, mm -hmm. no matter what going on in my life, I accept it and embrace it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize, like, man, whatever happened, happened. Man, embrace that shit and, and live in it, so mm -hmm. you can be okay. Mm-hmm. One hundred percent. And you feel fully emerge yourself, feel it, so you'll know that you, this ain't the feeling you ever want again, and move mm -hmm. past that shit and capitalize off the uh, off the loss. That's it. Oh, I feel that one hundred percent. All right, brother. So. What are some of your goals that you haven't accomplished yet? 
Bro, you want to know? That's a, that's a, <laughs> you know, I wish I was on here to give some like inspirational game and things like that, but that's a <laughs> fucked up question because I can't even turn that into, I like to turn things into learning lessons. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, what you just said is like, yo, a go line a comedy shit, dog, I bought a private jet by 32 years old. Like, Shoof. I don't, like, bro, honestly to God, bro, at this point, like, it's just experiences now, bro. I'm going to yeah. Shanghai. My daughter going to study abroad. Mm. I don't, <clears throat> it's just building businesses out, becoming greater, building bigger businesses out. Um, I got uh, recession-proof capital coming out where I'm about to start lending money. So it's 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 those things are unique that I got coming. Mm -hmm. But the uh, goals that I haven't accomplished, like I accomplished things I never could dream of. Yeah. So I can't really be like, yeah, I got like I'm on a road to 100 million. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that's a figure. That's a, a target. Mm -hmm. Goals wise, it's just I just want to I want to be a better father. I want to give my children better experiences. Like I'm growing up, mm -hmm. turning 36 this year, mm. and I just realized like I want to give my daughters and my family great experiences. So yeah. getting ready to go spend 11 days in Shanghai. She don't even know I'm gonna be there. Mm. I can't be there with her. I'm just I I just as a man, my feet got to be on ground. Yeah, I feel where it. Where my baby at? I but feel it. I ain't never been to Shanghai, and that's actually lit. You ever been there? Nah, I ain't never been. That's China, right? Yeah, dog. Yeah. You cause you it's you been it's, there? Nah. I looked at the videos and shit. It looked like like Dubai or Vegas. Really? Bro, it looked like a vibe. Nah. I said, okay. So I'm going to Shanghai, but those are goals. Like now it's like my goals is like my niece went and studied abroad in Paris. Like it's just expanding the horizon of gotcha. all the foundation. Like I need to now pour all my blessings and all my experiences and all my vision and, and my wisdom mm. in life into those that's coming behind me. Just plant the seeds, plant the seeds, plant the seeds, give them opportunities yep. so they can be great. And, and 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 just build the rest of my my, my soldiers up, my family up. Like mm. yo, I need I need dogs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, 100. I know exactly I, what I you mean. I need to build that next generation up. While I'm still here in a, in a young form mm -hmm. to be able to be impactful and have the game. So mm -hmm. when it's time to pass it, I got people there. I 100 percent agree with that. That's amazing because you, you don't you don't bought everything. Ain't nothing else you can buy. At it, this point, it's, it's just like yo, bigger <laughs> businesses. Like yo, you know, we learn to do business in other countries, and um, so like you know, that's why I'm getting into the capital business because yeah. I want to move to Dubai. I plan on leaving at the end of last year. I plan on doing that too, bro. Yeah. Got to. Yeah, let's do it. But the the deal was, I I can't my operations here. I can't be there. Yeah. It's not like leaving from Atlanta going to Miami. Yeah. Because we thought about we was like, okay, well let's just go to Miami. I said, okay, we can go to Miami, but Miami is right here we can we can move but mm -hmm. is it worth uprooting and going there the mm. uproot when we uproot i don't mm. want to uproot and just go somewhere and then do it again i need to uproot and go mm -hmm. and so with dubai is that's why i'm building out the recession proof capital building gotcha. out different entities and things like that to where it's a total different my business infrastructure is concrete where when i go here mm -hmm. my private jet and my travel stuff can go you mm -hmm. know it's up Mm -hmm. So everything that I do and I'm into, we can uproot and go. Man, that's major though. Congrats on the private jet, my man. I know you ain't drinking nothing, but con right. congrats. You can just pull it straight up. Right. Congrats on the private jet. That's a huge there. accomplishment. And that's on my list of things to do. So I ain't made it there yet. But goddamn, you just can have the pilot come pick you up straight from the house. Man, listen, <laughs> that shit is a different. It's a different. It's a different mood. A different vibe. You know, I right. sold. I sold my jet. Okay. I bought it. Uh, I bought that jet two years ago, mm -hmm. but I, I built a company around it, and the mm. company was more profitable than the jet. Mm. I have a month where I made ninety thousand mm. dollars, but then I have a month where I, or three months where I lose sixty, mm. and I'm like, okay. So I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a businessman. So mm. as we building out the brokerage and doing things, it's like, wait, we making way more money over here. We didn't build this company up to now. I got over a hundred million dollar evaluation, mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay. I'd rather focus in and double down here. Mm -hmm. This ain't mandatory needed. This was a good flex. It made me a lot of money, saved me money on taxes. It was very beneficial. Mm -hmm. But you know, I don't want to. I don't want to just keep fighting it or trying to. It's a learning curve. Yeah. So the next one I go get, like I'm going to get. I'll probably get one. I wanted, God willing, I was trying to get one for my birthday this year in June. Mm -hmm. I want to go get another one because now we got different positioning on how to do it. We learn mm -hmm. the game, learn the business a little bit more, learn how to take some of the the. Uh, the losses off of me, mm -hmm. so I'm not the one responsible for it. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm digging what you're putting down. <laughs> yeah, because you, you know, you bring a few different people and partners who do different things. Mm -hmm. A few different partners in to utilize the jet. You can maintain ownership of it, split the ownership to where, let's just say, the jet costs five million. 
and we go in we go in partner up on a jet but we all got a certain part part of it so we got throughout the year we split it by five gotcha. so we got a certain amount of hours that we can use it but then we also split the 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 uh, benefits okay. from you know our ownership in it mm -hmm. so we all save money on taxes so mm -hmm. it cut us all in like that so it's a lot of different benefits that can be done when we set it up together and so that's what I looked at like okay but we all get the utilization of we got a jet. Yeah. So now I go get, you know, I go get Trey. I go get the, the your pillows and everything that you want mm -hmm. and your mats and everything. So when you come to the hangar and get the jet, okay, mm -hmm. here they're going to swap it out and it's going to be all the way yours. Mm -hmm. So all of it, when you get on your on the jet, it's your shit. Your, mm -hmm. your logo on the screen, they already know. Okay, here go your pillows, here mm -hmm. go your blankets, here go the things that you like, mm -hmm. your mats. So when you coming up, your videos, mm -hmm. it's you. When That's you bring perfect. guests on or yeah. when you let somebody charter it for from you and pay you, mm -hmm. it's up. I like that. See, I'm talking too much. I'm giving game away. I ain't supposed to teach you that. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, you had that private conversation. <laughs> but you know, I've never flew on a jet before, bro. Uh, on a private jet. I, I, I've been on it. It's just, you know, to advertise me getting bookings for people. But I never, never flew. flew. Neo just booked me one, <laughs> but I was in Miami. I had to show some properties, so I didn't get a chance to get on it. But him 500 part two of the episode my second episode we're gonna do another one just because we're going to get on the jet the next one be on the jet let's go y'all heard it first on the jet. we on the jet baby mm -hmm. <laughs> i appreciate Yo, that bro i put so many people on the jet for the first time bro that's my that's one of my like i got a list bro of yeah. people that i was like yo because when I got it, you get on it once? Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's up. Don't worry about it. I'm going again. I'm figuring it out. Bro, it's a, it's a different way of traveling, bro. Yeah. It feel different. I be telling, like, Alex, all my brothers, bro, I put so many people on the jets for the first time. Mm. Niggas like, nah, I got to do like this. I seen Trap just went, took his mom on the jet, mm. all his, his whole team and staff, like, we got on that private jet for the first time. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, nah, when somebody tell me that, mm -hmm. don't worry, I got you. I'll yeah. make it happen. Yeah, appreciate that. That's that's my only, that's one of the only experiences I ain't experienced yet. Mm -hmm. Done everything, but we'll, we'll definitely get to that. So, what what's your money goal for the year? For this year, let me see, you turned 36 this year. Yeah, what's your money goal for this year? So, my money goal this year is, so what I'm looking at doing is building out different entities. Okay. So, I need different entities that can bring in on a, a monthly revenue goal of anywhere between 700 to 1.5 a month so mm, a month a month so <laughs> it's different I'm, I'm compartmentalizing it though that's why i have different entities so it doesn't put all the pressure because you know you go oh yeah i want to make a million a month like you know i've been able to accomplish and do that but mm. i've done it in one space that was based off of my efforts so now i'm going okay Build this up, bring 250. Bring this up, this gonna bring me 250. Bring this up, this gonna bring me 250 to five. Mm. This over here, I don't see. So my portfolios, my investments, mm -hmm. you know, bringing me X amount. So my goal is like, as I'm building, is that I wanna have investments that's gonna bring me at minimum 750 a month mm. off, not just investments, but all collectively together. Yeah. But then also by the end of the year, um, I want to get over 15 million in uh, control assets in my on my real estate portfolio. Wow. So that and then bringing that so the money coming in also it's not just for me to make money to be like i'm making money mm -hmm. i also want to go acquire another 15 million dollars in assets that mm. you know cash flow you know on the real estate side have under management bro that's major man that's mm -hmm. that's huge 15 yeah. million in assets a minimum of seven hundred fifty thousand per month yeah damn mm -hmm. i gotta set higher goals man Man, listen, bro, that's a, this, the, this the start right now. I'm being, that's the, bro, listen, that ain't even the highest. The, the hard part about that, to get the money is there. Mm -hmm. It's to get the money properly in a, in, see, like, I've been in the education space. Okay. So I've had multiple million dollars months. I, I went on a 16, 17 month, 17 months straight, mm -hmm. million dollars, nothing less than a million a month. Mm. 17 months straight. 17 months straight. Whew. Cool. Nothing less than a million. Nothing less than a million. Y'all heard it. Eighty percent plus profit margin. Okay. I went on those runs, but I seen the the man that it took. That's why I gained all that fucking weight. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like I see the demand that too it takes. Good. Bro, gold stakes <laughs> and shit. We, so what I realized is that I need to set up other businesses and companies 
but not only setting up the business for income generation, but also looking at the equity stake in my, I mean, my valuations. Yeah. So as I'm building out businesses, I'm building out businesses that I can go out and acquire little companies under. Mm. So that's why I'm doing recession proof capital because I can get a lot of other these little funding companies that I can go acquire yep. to build this up because I'm looking at the overall evaluation. Yeah. So when you look at all these billionaires, they're not billionaires based off of they got a billion dollars. They're billionaires based off the evaluations of their business. Mm. I learned that when I did the, the, the private jet, the brokering business. Mm. So when we got that and they go, okay, yeah, we got a valuation of like 110, 110, 104, 104 million. Mm -hmm. And somebody offered us 84 million. And I said, oh. Mm. And I thought, oh man, we sell 84 million, we up. Mm. Nah, cap, these niggas better be selling businesses for 100 million and shit like that. Mm. That shit cap. They only, they don't get 100 million cash. No, you go get, you'll go get three to five million seven at max and if you got partners you splitting that mm. and then you 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 get the rest over time based off of performance Damn. based off if i make you the money if the company keeps performing and if it doesn't i don't mm. get it mm. but i'll stand and say oh i sold a business for 150 million mm. man i've seen that shit i said so they wanted to give up like three to four million give stock options all this other little bullshit and i said nah what's the cash three mm -hmm. four million i said what the fuck we worry about that for mm -hmm. we make that mm -hmm. and i gotta be tied to you for two three years with the business and mm -hmm. still be fuck out of mm -hmm. here so you got to get into businesses that when we say we exit okay the check that get cut based off of performance is a lot higher mm -hmm. and does not require me to stay there gotcha you know what i mean and be there super hands-on for so long where the operations is there so that's my main goal now. It's like, nah, bro, we building. So when I build out recession proof capital, when I build out the business emporium, when I build out, you know, how I got recession proof set up now and these different businesses, my jet brokerage company, I got a tech company. So as we build these out, mm. it's like, nah, build them out. The money coming in and collected is cool. Yeah. But the evaluation is great because now I can cash out. Mm. Now when I cash out, I can walk away. Mm. It's a different, it's a different ball game. You know what I mean? I'm not playing the go go uh the mindset of most entrepreneurs got the mindset of go do work get paid and down there like the nine to five employee yeah. you know what i'm saying you yeah. don't work to get a check yeah that ain't i, I gotta get away from that doing shit to get paid this mm -hmm. month or this week it's the overall like long-term game now i got you mm -hmm. bro you so intelligent man to be 36 at the end i mean now i'm 35 i turned 36 this year 35 35 yeah. became a millionaire at what age 30. Damn, man. Mm -hmm. Goals. Mm -hmm. That's goals right there. It was before 29. It was 29, right before my 30th birthday. Damn. Because my 30th birthday, no, it was 30. Yeah. My 30th, bir 30, 30th birthday, I wanted to buy a Rafe. I didn't. I bought mm -hmm. it my 31st. Yep. The blue one. Birthday. Yep. <laughs> then I, then 30, second, 30, 32nd or 33rd birthday, 33rd birthday, I bought a jet. Damn. Yep. So when I was 32, I bought my jet. Amazing. Man, you set the bar you set the bar really high, brother, huh? It's tough to compete with that. Bro, listen, we just gotta <laughs> we just gotta keep working. The thing is, yeah. bro, we, we do and see so much, bro, and like in life the materialistic items is one part, but it'd be the experiences that we get in life. Yeah. And so many relationships that you're able to build. Like you look, bro, like you've been on this journey for a long time. Like, right. you know, and, and, and I've been able to see it and, and, and blessed to be able to witness it. Like so many different people you've been able to help yeah. and grow and just doing it within real estate, but always still maintaining you. Yep. It ain't 100%. going and being like, oh, this uppity tight ass. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's, it's still, you still maintain who you are, bro. And that's the thing that's inspirational. It's like, okay, my man to be in there. You'll see him on the page and he going to have that suit on mm -hmm. and he going to he straight top tier, straight on business. Right. But then you're going to see him. He going to be out. He going to have some shit on. He going to be dripped out and right. you catch him jumping out of out one of the exotics and yeah you know yep. what i mean 100%. like so that's the thing is that it's setting that example and us being able to see it yeah it also contributes that let me know and give me the confidence yeah those you give me confidence to still stay in my lane like nah you mm -hmm. can be that don't wow. don't let these don't let these niggas make you switch nigga. Yeah, you exactly. don't got a cold switch exactly we don't got to do it and that's the shit. so when you look at it bro it's like the bar set my bar don't exist without you you know oh, what I'm man. saying? I These appreciate Y'all all, everybody, we contribute to one another. Yeah. And, and, and look into each other. We feed off of each other. We see what people is doing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, oh, no, I got it. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the blessings. And that's one of the blessings of being in Atlanta because you see it in real time. Yes, sir. It's one thing I see you on Instagram, but it's another one. We're like, okay. We actually seeing it when you ride by. Yep. You see that in the whip. You yep. see the house. So, yeah, that, that is a huge blessing, man. You're right. Mm -hmm. So, man, we, we don't talk. I know we don't talk a lot about business, man. 
This is definitely someone y'all want to look up to, follow, follow the blueprint, uh, get with Recession Proof. He's got it there for you to become successful, teach you how to do your own credit. So it's all about if the person is willing to put in the work. Yeah. Next, we're going to get into the marriage talk. Okay. Because you, you, you married. Mm -hmm. All right, let me see. You got that? I got you. I know most people don't be knowing how to do it. So, so being married, mm -hmm. how is that? Because I, I, I've never been married. I, I, yeah. How is the married life? It's a blessing. Yeah. It's a blessing. You know, it's a, um, it's a lifesaver. Really? 100%. Damn. You know, I, I, I got grilled when I said married men are more successful than single men. I seen that. <laughs> I seen that. Hey, you had me questioning my whole life. I'm like, man, damn, let me get my shit together. Right. And I, and I, and I say that because... And in prime example is, is Diddy. Mm. What that single shit bring to a nigga, man? Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, it's it's things that he just partake in, and for so long, mm. it's little instances that turn into big because they compound. Mm. And especially it's dealing with women. It's mm. always the man's downfall is dealing with women. So when mm. we look at it, you look and go, damn, for 30 years you've been the king. You've been you sat on a throne for 30 years. You go in any city you have in your way. Mm -hmm. mm. You know how many women that is? Mm. You know the, 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 the problematic of slip-ups, of discrepancies and mistakes that you didn't make. You didn't overly press this girl. You didn't read it wrong. You was drunk and you thinking that, you know, and, and I don't condone none of it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, but what I do understand is that, oh, you thought she was with it, but you was drunk. Mm. She wasn't as drunk as you. Mm. You thought she was with it, and then you got her drunk, and she wasn't all the way with it, mm. and now she regret it. Mm. Ain't that you forced it and just like, mm -hmm. but, you know what I'm saying? And over time, over the years, bro, I said, I asked, damn, this is a bad topic. God damn. <laughs> but I asked, I asked, you know, I asked a man, like, bro, like, you ever been with a girl, and she like, I don't know. And you're like, yeah, man, let's do it, do it, do it, and you talk her into it. Mm -hmm. And then guess what? She go home and all her friends find out that you slept with Diddy and now you a groupie hoe. Mm. And now they all laugh at you. Mm. Or your boyfriend find out because you're in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Now she go, well, I said, I don't know. Mm. Compound that over 30 years, how many times that happened there. Somebody got exposed, went home. Mm -hmm. Now they mad than a motherfucker. Mm. But not, no, no way in, in, in shape, form, or is that, is those instances okay? It's because of the lifestyle that you live. Yeah. You know, the drugs and shit, the alcohol and shit. All of this brings about so everything that comes with it you know you ask for it yeah you know what i'm yeah. saying like you 100 percent asked for it and and you lived for it mm. so you know you got to deal with it unfortunately but that's the shit that married men don't really deal with on as often yeah because you look at hove, hove ain't gonna yeah. go through that like that yeah you know what i'm saying you gonna right. have to go back 30 years to say he did something way back when yeah he ain't going through it because he married. His his attention is different. Right. You know what I'm saying? Them discrepancies and problematic situations is like, is 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 less prevalent because it's always something with men doing drunk shit with women. Mm. It's always an issue. Chasing women. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, right. and and when while chasing women, um, the activities that go on. Yeah. And the environments that you be in. Yeah. Then the friends that you end up partnering up with and being friends with is is because we on the same time. Mm. And so it's like, you know, it's it's a catch twenty two. So for me, you know, I've been blessed to be married and be able to build with somebody, somebody that, that I can always lean on that understand me yeah. from the gate. This I ain't get with my wife when I was already successful. Mm. We built it so she know every single level of me. Mm. She's learned every level. So that's level. important too. Yeah. So y'all been together since you was what? 27. 27. So mm -hmm. you going on almost 10 years, yep. about eight, eight or nine. Yeah. Then married, what, four or five, something like that? Going on four years. Four years. How did you know that she was going to be the right one for you? I Cause, didn't. Cause I couldn't get, get rid of her. It's a lot of options. Couldn't get rid of her. You know, you, you you try to distance yourself from somebody and you can't let them go. Mm. Like, I couldn't stop calling. Mm. Like, I didn't want to talk to you no more, but then I still call you and text you. Hey, man, <laughs> just, man right. shit. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you know, it was, it was we had a bond yeah. of way that we communicated to where it was like, she sensed things that was going on in my life, things, problems that was there, and she would show up when I, when I didn't ask for it to. Yeah. I didn't know, like, 
you even peep shit. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? She would mm-hmm. do shit like come. She would come to the crib, and and realize like, yo, you need you need to stack up on some more underclothes. Gotcha. And, would, and would send me a package of drawers. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Little like, stuff like that. I eight. You know, I open up a box. It's fucking eight packs of drawers. Like she's a over. Mm. Like you need more than enough. You don't need two deodorants. Then you should have eight just so Damn. you know you don't run out. Mm. And I'd be like, but that's things that she would. But she would look at and wouldn't tell me what I need to do. She would just do it. Mm. Here you go. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I get a package of uh, uh, shit. Like boom. Mm. You know what I mean? And so it was always that. Gotcha. And, on the conversation level, the mental level, it was like when I would go through things or when I'm thinking about something, I would talk to her. Mm-hmm. And she would ask questions that would make me answer my own problems. Mm. Not trying to give me a solution or give it to me. She just knew how to like deal with me. Mm. And that was like... That's amazing. Yeah, so it was like, you know what? Like, we go through this, we start building, and it was like, nah, like, I try to leave you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and I couldn't. Yeah. Okay, cool, I'm accepted. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I I'm accepted. You. you know, it. niggas, niggas, niggas that try to be like, you know, I got commitment issues. You know, I just don't want it. And I try. <laughs> like, you know what? This ain't going to work. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I got scared because it was too real. It was no problem. Mm. And I said, I couldn't do it. Mm. I've, I've been able to back out on people before and cut people off and break up and end relationships. I couldn't end this one. Yeah. So I could fully commit it. And... Do you feel like you would be more do you feel like you would be as successful well you just answered that actually you feel like by being married you feel like you're more successful than what you than what you would be being single a hundred percent 100 percent, bro you don't it's it's i don't give a damn how cool you is with your homeboys they don't you don't show them your bank account that's true you know what I'm saying? That's they don't know true. your credit score. They don't know your social. That's they don't true. go with you to the doctor, nigga. They ain't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they ain't there yeah. when you got the runs and mm-hmm. everything going on. You ain't supposed to be eating that, this, that, and thirty, nigga. They not finna do that. Mm. I don't care. Ain't nobody. Somebody got to take care of you. Somebody mm-hmm. got to care for you on a, on a, on a whole nother spiritual level, mm. but on a physical level mm. and on a, on a, on a really somebody that really care. It changed everything because, but it, it also gives you ultimate confidence because it takes certain things off that I ain't got to worry about. Yeah. And so for me, I look at it and go, this is somebody who can, I can really, I got somebody that I can be 100% open with. Yeah. And that know me. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. And it wasn't even me choosing to be open. Mm-hmm. She would find stuff and open stuff and figure out everything. Like, where's that? Oh, this is this. Okay, got you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, my wife would uh, 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 be in my email and be like, man, they emailing you. Why you ain't respond? Mm-hmm. And it'd be like, people be like, yo, why your wife be like, she got my Instagram passwords, everything. Like, she on all my shit. Right. People be like, man, why she be like, yo, she searching something? Like, no, nigga, you niggas is stupid. Mm. You think because a woman that got, is on your Instagram that she checking for you cheating. Nigga, I control my dick. You niggas don't control your dick, and the only thing you think about is giving a woman your password. You thinking about all the sleaze ball shit you got going mm. on. I don't got that going on. Mm. Nigga, what I'm looking at is that when somebody send me a message that I miss, when somebody send me an email that I miss, because mm. I don't respond, I know my flaws. Mm. I don't see things, and then I, I don't, I, I'm not going back and checking. Mm-hmm. So with my emails and stuff like that, I don't never, I'll miss it. I have appointments and serve things I'm supposed to fill out, documents mm-hmm. I'm supposed to sign, checks I'm supposed to collect. Mm. I ain't doing it. Man, mm-hmm. they, she's, you know that's my counterpart that mm. is there to, to, to back me mm-hmm. but so often is that men get into this this new world men don't think like oh man you, if you got to check you know it's an issue you know you shouldn't have to check this is my privacy mm-hmm. i can't have this you, you my life partner what right exactly what, what am i hiding what's right. private yep. you know what i'm saying like right. you you here you got login access to every bank account you see everything coming in because if, if my hr calling if my coo is calling if people is calling saying they ain't get paid or somebody need to get paid, right. motherfucker, you don't gotta wait on me. Yeah. It was a time I'm out of the country. We had to do something. It's like a hundred thousand. And I'm like, fuck, I, I got all my shit on me. I'm like, I can't, I'm like, I gotta send them a wire, but uh where was I at? But the my address, they wouldn't let me do it off my phone. Mm. And my wife's like, okay, I'll do it. And I'm like, what you mean? I'm like, it's a hundred thousand. She's like, yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> said, yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? And so imagine getting caught in a in a position where you need a hundred thousand. You can't name a nigga giving you gonna tell you. Nah, hell no. Hundred thousand and do Ain't like no, your closest homeboy ain't finna be you know damn hundred thousand. Yeah, like you know what I'm saying. But she got it put up because she already know like when I be moving and doing shit. So it's just like we set so many things up. But I know, like I know, like okay, here I can throw my wife twenty thousand, mm-hmm. and I'd like go shopping and she'll go spend six and put fourteen up. Mm. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then she'd tell me like, hey, I just spent 10, you, I, had, I sent this person 10,000, like give it back. Mm. And I'd be like, all right, cool. I don't have to worry like, mm. she know how to keep us right and mm. she play her position. Mm. So that's the thing is like, most people, for me, I wouldn't be here because it's so often she had to catch me when I'm slipping. Yeah. So many deals would fall through because I slip and mishandle it. Yeah. And I got somebody there that's like staying on top of me and staying I like on top that. of shit. I like that. I need that because it, I damn sure be slipping. A lot of people reach out. Mm -hmm. I miss the me I'm bad at that. Missing messages, deadlines. Yep. Uh, I, I need to use my damn calendar. I don't even use my calendar. Me like neither. Shit, bro, bro, I, I, <laughs> bro, I cannot <laughs> tell you. Bro, I'm telling you, people be like, yo, you got to do this. Like, she like, yeah, she she had the date wrong yesterday. She like, okay, um, she like, I got to get my hair done. And her, her, her stylist call was like, yeah. okay, you come in tomorrow. She said, yeah, I got an event at four. And I'm like, what event you got at four? Yeah. And she like, you serious? And I'm like, what? She like, you got, I just told you what you're wearing tomorrow. You got to do the Kim Live. And I said, man, that's Sunday. Yeah. And she was like, is it? And I said, it's at six. And she said, no, it's four. But she looked and she said, okay, I do got the date wrong. It is Sunday. Yeah. But it, it started at four and you thinking it started at six. Mm. And you always run on time. Mm. But I'm like, my set go on at six. But she like, look. Mm. She got to stay on tune with everything that's going on. Gotcha. But she didn't think it. She thinking she got the wrong date. She getting mad at me. I'm wondering this morning why she was asking me like what I'm wearing. Yeah. And I'm like, it ain't tomorrow. Nah, two days. I'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. All right, cool. So that's the, all the good stuff. So when it's the tough times, because we know it gets tough sometimes. Mm -hmm. How do you endure the tough times in marriage when you just like maybe want to give up? You know, or you know, one person ain't listening when the other person trying to explain. How do you move past those times? Build relationships with people on when on the good times, right? If I had single friends, we wouldn't be married no more. Mm. My friends have helped contribute to saving my marriage. Gotcha. Jason Livedale, Mr. Two Weeks Out, Mr. Two Weeks Out, Jeremy mm. Anderson, Neo. Like, you know, it's nobody's perfect yeah and we have times where it's like man fuck you i don't care like and, it, 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 and you get to a point where you upset mm -hmm. and my niggas won't they ain't going mm. man look who, who your counselor because i'm one of the ones i wouldn't go to counseling <laughs> so i wasn't going <laughs> right i'm like all right i go to certain ones but i'm like i ain't man all right they're like nah you need to go to one by yourself not together yeah and so not not only is it that to tell me something like jason put me in a group message with the counselor. Mm. Followed up. Him and me, yo, followed up with me three days. Yo, mm -hmm. what's up with that session? You go. Wow. Yo, what happened? How it go? Show me that you went. Wow. I, I screenshot, sent Neo the, the Zoom link, the Zoom call was on, mm. and the nigga like, bro, you bullshit. Why you doing that shit on Zoom? Nigga, you need to be in person with him, bro. You fucking mm. up. Like, go sit with him. Mm. And I'm like, nigga, who you talking to, bitch? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, right. but I'm like, damn, like, these is my brothers. Like, it's not only for, this ain't just a business or friendship for fun. Mm. Like, I'm thankful to have friends that's here. That's holding you know what I'm saying? That, that hold it. My wife is able to call and talk to Jeremy Anderson and his wife mm. and ask them, like, you know, about things in, 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 in trying times and, and, and how they deal with things mm -hmm. and get encouraging words that make, make us enlightened and think about it like, oh, got it. This is how I need to handle it. Mm. These are the things that we need to do. And these are things that kind of help us stay together and respect our friends and be thankful for mm -hmm. them. And that's why I tell people, it's like, I have these certain friends on purpose. Mm -hmm. I hang with certain people on purpose. Certain people, people be mad. Like I don't come around and hang around with certain people, or mm -hmm. don't go to people's shit. It's like I don't want to be in certain environments. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and it's like I, I choose the environments I'm in on purpose, and I'm blessed because I see what they do for me. Yeah, that man. I talk about relationships. Mm -hmm. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, imagine having relationships where nobody gonna let you out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like friends calling like nah we finna go sit down like you know Alani called me like my auntie like hey we finna go sit down on Thursday I said Wednesday I said well I got well there I said okay well Wednesday we finna go sit down and, 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 and go eat because I want to talk to you mm. and we all need to talk so we all finna sit down and let's just we finna get together and talk right and right. these is my friends and it's like okay you know this is what I'm thankful for yeah because it's not always gonna be perfect it's not always perfect right but what happened is is that the learning lessons through is that as we reach different points or we reach different levels of turmoil, it's like, okay, well, why? And then how do we deal with it? And then, you know, realizing the significance and the importance of the relationship and so many things. Like, I'm not with my wife because we got kids. Mm -hmm. 
You like y'all got kids together. You got this together. I'm with my wife because I like her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm with you because I like you. I love you and I value you to my life. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck about nothing else. Mm. Anything, nothing. It's not. I will not stay with you because we got kids together. Mm Mm-hmm. And we both understand that. Like, mm-hmm. I'm never going to be with you just because we got kids. I'm not staying in this because my kids' household. Mm-hmm. I'll never sacrifice my happiness because I know who I got to be. Mm. I'm here because I want to make you happy and I want to be that person who, I, who I've been to you and continues to grow and develop. And I want you to continue to be that person for me because I can never replace this. Yeah. We didn't made it to level like goddamn 10 together. Yeah. No way I can ever train anybody or anybody can go through these experiences with me. Yeah. It's over with. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. All right. So I, I, I hear everything you're saying. For the brothers that are single, like myself, and they wanting to be in a relationship or wanting marriage, and in this day and age, it's pretty tough, you know, with the, the social media and all of that. Mm. What kind of advice can you give the brothers that, that actually want to be with someone? What what should they be doing? Or what should they stop doing? Because I know I be wilding sometimes. So, <laughs> the thing is, the thing is this, right? Yeah. You know, um, you know the things that a good relationship will mean to you, right? What it will do for you. Having a good woman that you could trust, mm-hmm. a woman that's there for you, that's willing to hold you down, that's committed to you, that's willing to... to you know, accept all your flaws mm-hmm. and and improve on them, mm-hmm. and will that if she can if, if she's strong in your flaw points, and what it would do for your life, and mm-hmm. you know, and, and match every aspect though, mm-hmm. fine, the sex good, right, the everything like I need this is what I want. You know what that does for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do you do for her? You ask me. Yeah. What I do for the woman? Yeah. Shit, everything. You provide, protect. Uh, security uh shit love all the five love languages you know what i'm saying touch attention care gifts i mean shit you know the women they want it all so i have to but i can't give it i can't do all that right out the back though that ain't that ain't what you gotta that's not what you gotta give to the woman in relationship Mm. what you gotta be is everything that you said the Mm. things that's gonna come for her is gonna be the things like Remember, feel, fulfilling your flaws and things like that. Right. So it's like looking into like your own emotional intelligence and saying, okay, how do I deal with conflict resolution? Mm. You know, how mm. do I go yeah, with, with with growth and with accepting you for who you are? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? What can I accept? Like I, I'm willing to accept the things that come with you. Um, you look into everything that you're gonna that they're gonna need from you. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think what I would challenge men is that look, don't look at you know what a woman gonna give to you, but you gotta look at like the kind of woman and the woman that you want to do that, who do she need in return to make it beneficial Mm. and equally yoked? Mm. Who do I have to be in return? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I can't be that in return once I get her. Mm -hmm. I got to be that in return before I get to her. Mm. So when I do get her, I'm here Mm -hmm. because now we grow. We ain't now. I'm not talking to like we 18, 25 is different. Right. Now it's like, nah, 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 dog. I'm already, I'm made. Like my life is good. Right. So it's different if like, yo, my, my level of scoped in me first. Yep. I got to scope me first before I put myself into this. I got to build. I know the puzzle piece that you're going to feel, mm-hmm. but I have to make myself into the puzzle piece to feel yours mm. and be willing to know, like, I'm not coming in this to take from you. I'm willing I'm willing to be this for you because I know what you'll be back for me. Gotcha. And if I, it's certain things that it's going to take a lot for a woman to adapt to in this day and age because of how the world goes, how social media goes. Oh, he a player. Oh, he this. Mm-hmm. All the things that she gonna have to deal with and live with mm-hmm. that you know. Okay, I'm gonna have to be willing to say, okay, if if they say, oh, he got a pass. Oh, he was doing this. Like I gotta know that. I gotta accept that, and mm-hmm. that I have to work to prove to her mm-hmm. that I, that's the thing of the past. That I'm no longer there. Uh, I that gotcha. I'm willing to fight that battle. Gotcha. Because I begged it for myself. Gotcha. So I can't say, man, that's it. Just believe my words. Like mm-hmm. I gotta lead it with action. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like I gotta become that person. Like we gotta be that person on the other side. It's just like I tell people about employees is that when you want to hire somebody, you know what that person's gonna do for your business. Yeah. But never do you plan out what I'm gonna do for the employee mm. like what they're gonna benefit everything mm-hmm. they gonna gain mm-hmm. you see what i'm saying and identifying like oh okay well the woman that i want because i can now i can't say i need a 35 year old uh christian woman with three kids to be my admin because mm-hmm. it's like you know it's 
discrimination. I can't put that on the on description on the job, right? Right, right. But you can on your relationship. Gotcha. You can say, I want a woman that, you know, comes from this type of family. Mm -hmm. um, I want a woman that does these type of things. I want a woman that does not have this. And in order for me to do that, I have to look and say, well, what is that woman going to require? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, a a, a, a 32-year-old woman with a degree that's making multiple six figures is going to require a different level from this man. Gotcha. I know I'm not going to be able to be traveling and doing certain things or certain things she's going to want from me right. versus a 27-year-old who ain't in college that's just out here having fun. Right. And that can be with you any time of the day. Y'all can go where y'all want to go and we can travel and this is my fun little piece and you know what I'm saying? This is that. And I'm cool with that. Right. And I'm going to put a kid in your ass in two years after we do this traveling and I see that. You know, but are you willing to pull back to be the, the the wife that I need and the mother that I need. 100%. You know what I'm saying? So it's 100%. men gotta identify the woman that they want and not just that they want off of visuals, like mm. they want as in the characteristic traits. And then who do they have to be mm. to match that to make it work mm. and be willing to be like, okay, these are sacrifices I yeah. gotta I gotta make for me and who I gotta stop being not Oh, I'm single right now. It's good. When I get ready, it's gonna it's gonna happen. Yeah, exactly. Nah, because then bad habits just it just it yeah. just, there's just more baggage and more cleanup you got to do when you get to her. So, oh yeah, man. You know, oh that girl. Why she speak to you? Oh, <laughs> oh man. We can't go near these restaurants. <laughs> Fuck it. We just gonna move. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they got switch cities because it tore it up. But you know what? Then you get as a single person, you get stuck in your ways, and you like, man. Sometimes I look at a woman as coming in like a mama, a mother figure. You know, you got to answer to her. You got to answer that call when she call you. you. You know, you got to, you get scared if you're doing something wrong, you know, which you shouldn't be. But it's like, you got to answer to someone. I don't know. I, I never really liked answering to nobody. Mm -hmm. But I guess when you find that right one, it, it won't feel like that. It won't feel like you're answering to them, right? It, I'm assuming. Nah, hell no. Nah, you always answer. I always answer. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's the thing is that is that why is this person answer asking the questions ah you see what i'm saying like gotcha. is that the questions that are coming about it's like when when i'm answering to somebody it's because they're trying to either figure things out and we develop it and they haven't learned yet they haven't known yet yeah because you can set the tone one of my og said this he told me he said look man when i got with my wife when i got with her i wake up every day whether i got something to do or not i'm out of the house by nine o'clock mm. And if you don't want nothing, then don't call me and ask me. I'm working. Mm. I'll be back around six. Mm. He said, I go out, I handle my business. So I ain't all day. She calling me saying, oh, what you doing? FaceTiming, where you at? Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't deal with that. But I started that way. So when I went into the relationship, I knew what I didn't want because I had this in my previous relationship. Gotcha. And he was like, I knew I didn't want that. He said, so I don't care if I ain't got nothing to do. I'm just going to go to the office. I ain't even got nothing to do. I go to the office and goddamn sit there and just be on my phone or something and watch Kess Sports Center or something. But I'm not going to be sitting in this goddamn house with you. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to think that I'm the type of man to just sit in the house and ain't got mm -hmm. nothing going on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out here and I got something to do. because. Mm -hmm. and, but that was his synopsis on how he went into the relationship. Yeah. What I say is that Women going, if they got a question, somebody asking something, is they trying to figure it out? Mm -hmm. And it's something that they in the unknown of. Mm -hmm. Or they asking something they know the answer to already is because yeah. it's an insecurity. Yeah. We just got to eliminate it, bro. We just, that's the part of thinking about it beforehand. Like, I don't want nobody calling me or doing this and doing that. You set that tone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and they're not going to call. Like, if they secure and they, they feel safe and they in, a, in, in that Y'all in that matched energy, mm -hmm. you won't have that issue, and you will never have an issue when they calling because you know they ain't calling to be nosy. Like, what you doing and not trusting you, and yeah. where you at, who you with. Let me see. If it ain't that, you like, yeah. you know, she wants something. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, oh. and when you ain't doing nothing wrong, it's like, I don't never mind. You call me. You call me whatever the fuck you want. What you, what you want? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what's up? Yeah. I, right. You know, it's always good to hear my woman voice. Like, Right. What's up, baby? You got what's going on? You okay? Everything good? I'm gonna put you in the hot seat on this next question, mm -hmm. cause I be think I think about this sometimes. You know, you know we're kings, mm -hmm. so you know kings have multiple wives. What do you think about having two wives or two women, three? You know, I went viral for this shit before. <laughs> niggas, niggas will go back. Niggas go back into the king shit. Yeah. Niggas go back into the king shit. When it's when it's when it's beneficial, mm. niggas like to say we kings. Okay, well kings you, kings build families. Mm. 
kings build castles. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And it's like, well, where your where your castle at? I ain't built this yet. Dude, don't go into that king shit mm -hmm. when you're not living and operating on that king level. Like kings, it's a heritage. It's a, it's the heirs. You start building the heirs to the throne. The things that you build and you build with somebody. You come out of a certain heritage, a mm -hmm. certain life, and it's not just on the side of like I'm a king. I can have multiple women. No, 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 no. Because as a king, you go out and you conquer a lot of things and operate in this level at all times. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times niggas like to say that when it comes to women. I want to have multiple women. No, nigga, you want to you want to be a player or uh -huh. you want to do. It ain't even the the. It's the niggas be thinking what they did because it's not polygamy. Yeah. Because they're not into the polygamy. They just like nah, nigga, shit. I know, I know some women that's with it. Yeah. And they with <laughs> having two. Yeah. But I don't want to marry these motherfuckers. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But at that point, you go. Am I operating that? Because I said it before. I said, man, in reality, today's society, man, like all that king shit, like. I, men deserve more than one like niggas is not kings and niggas is not operating like kings niggas yeah. is out here niggas is content creators man. Mm. like niggas is content creators the social media influencers this shit is not like okay we're not going out there doing the shit that the niggas who needed two wives need used to do yeah. them niggas used to go out there barefoot go hunt shit kill shit blood mm. bare hands and come back mm. nowadays niggas motherfucking instagram get cut down these niggas is, is panicking and their <laughs> life is over you see what i'm saying right I'm with like you. it ain't it ain't that and it'd yeah. be like nah you horny motherfucker you got some motion <laughs> but you just want to have sex and you ain't learn to control that shit ah. and until you can control it to where okay you want to be a king then provide that provide that and you bring that woman into the household yeah. and you bring and you you go out and put them seeds into that woman mm. nigga ain't putting no seeds in that woman nah you're not really on a king you mm. just want to get your set your rocks mm. off but if you put seeds in that woman and you got to take care of them kids nigga now be a king yeah because a king gonna raise his he yeah. gonna he gonna he gonna build this castle he gonna build his family out but he gonna stand on he gonna raise his kids and he gonna put them in his house Go get two women pregnant and deal with them two kids and raise them mm -hmm. and be emotionally intelligent enough for them. Mm -hmm. be, and then be financially there to provide everything that you want for yourself for them women. Mm -hmm. Nigga, you not finna go, nigga, I said, you not finna go, you 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 got motherfucking Rolex watches, you got Cartier watch mm -hmm. on, you got Maybach. Mm -hmm. Okay, you gonna buy her, you gonna buy two of them? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Go mm. buy it, go buy it, go buy it. Go, so go get two more Maybach's, go get rid of the coloring, mm. and go get two Maybach's <laughs> mm -hmm. for them women. Mm. Oh, they ain't got to get the Maybach. Okay, well, at least go get them the g wag Because mm -hmm. they, they got to live to the same standard as exactly. a king, as you in your castle. Everybody lives and nobody is a peasant. Mm -hmm. And so in today's society, we don't look at it that way. It's like, yeah, well, I should be able to have two women. Yeah, you want to have two bottom feeders, mm. but you don't want to have two queens. Mm. You can't say you're a king and you you ain't you ain't got and you want queens. Mm -hmm. You got to treat them as such. I you like can't it. treat that you can't treat that woman like a peasant mm. and say you a king. Mm. It don't work like that. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Like, I agree. so when you got to treat a woman like a queen, it's no way I'm treating multiple women how I treat my wife. Yeah. I ain't got it, my boy. Yeah. You not finna tell me. Oh, here go a flaw in you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, here go insecurity. Oh, here go this. You got two or three of y'all doing that to me? Man, I'll be committing suicide. <laughs> two or three women on their period different times? Never. You see what I'm saying? Two or three women demanding different parts of my emotional and, and, and my mental. Yeah. I got to st mentally stimulate you differently. Because, yeah. nigga, just as much as I emotionally and physically stimulate you i gotta mentally stimulate you of course doing that to three different women having yeah. to touch all them different parts and understanding that yeah man bro i can't i couldn't That's live like that i agree you know i agree that? i agree with you 100 percent. all right man well you done definitely talk the talk you <laughs> walk the walk and mm -hmm. man it's been a pleasure having you on the show so we're gonna we're gonna close it on out mm -hmm. but i like to end every show on a positive note so anyone out there looking at you, looking up to you, kids, uh, someone working at McDonald's, what kind of life advice can you give someone to put them on a path to attaining financial freedom like yourself? Work ethic and experiences. So no matter where you work at, you can work at, a man can work at McDonald's, a woman can work at McDonald's and be more financially stable than somebody making six figures. What I would challenge you to do is understanding that you learn how to manage and budget your money and don't judge off how much is coming in. Don't judge the don't judge it off of the, the quantity, judge it off of the quality of what you do with it and your quality of the abilities to make it work. And when mm. you do that and you can make your money work and you understand how to actually, if you could save, it's a percentage game. Money is a numbers game. If you look and say, okay, I can save seven to 15% of what I bring in mm. and then I can spend X amount of 
if I could take 20% of what I make and put towards bettering myself and, and investing in myself, not only is it self-education, it may be investing into, you know, getting you a, a, a dresser at home because your living environment needs to be great. So mm. a lot of times as a young man, I used to have my clothes in the tub. When I started thinking, it's like I started going buying me a nice bedroom set, making sure I have nice dishes in my house. Mm. Those are investments, being able to invest in my quality of life mm. and to make me a better person all the way around. Mm -hmm. That's the things when it comes to it. And then the, sec the second part is experiences. Never shy away from experiencing new things. Never shy away from trying new foods. Never shy away from traveling. Never shy away from building relationships with people that you're uncomfortable with or going to environments that you're uncomfortable with because those experiences are things that make you greater. Don't do the things that you've done. Don't mm. continuously go to the same places that you've been. Mm. If you like to eat out and you say you're a foodie, stop going to toast. Go find <laughs> Michelin rated restaurants and go learn how to eat out. Damn, I love toast. No, toast is my favorite, but I'm saying... <laughs> what you say, Michelin rated? Michelin rated, right? Mm. And so with that is that... With, with toast is that those are our comfort places because we go right. in and we see everybody look like us. Right. Now, I go to them restaurants where you guys spend $600, $400, mm. and they give you them little-ass plates. Mm. And them little I can't ass... stand that shit. Yes. Listen. I hate that shit. But bro, you going to get all my money and give me this little-ass piece of food? <laughs> but but the thing is, the environment, yeah. the environment be like, uh. it be nice, but then it's also like, yo, what the fuck do they say on the menu? Mm. Yeah, what is 100%. It? What is it right, what is this? Yeah. Yo, like, just say it's truffle mac, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Right. But these are things that challenge, like, I learn these things, because, and it's not that I just enjoy the restaurant. I enjoy the going in and be and, and feeling like I don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. Like, y'all walk in here and I feel stupid, and I'm like, cool. I can only feel stupid once or twice. Mm. And then I start, it's, I continuously learn, but it shows me where I'm missing things at. Gotcha. Because as you start to grow in life, you're going to have to start going like people. I did an interview the other day and this is <laughs> fucked up because I said, I said it's levels to life. A lot of y'all look at Yelp reviews and don't even understand what a Michelin star rated restaurant is. Mm. And, and, and what, what happens is, is that somebody told me, yeah, you know, when I go places, you know, uh, I'm always looking for like the Michelin rated when you go to these places, different countries, look for the Michelin rated restaurants. And I was like, fuck is Michelin rated restaurants? Right. The Michelin star. So I looked at Atlanta and it's like, oh yeah, Atlanta got a few restaurants that got one star, but Michelin go up to like three or five stars. Mm -hmm. Atlanta has three restaurants that has one star. Mm -hmm. That's the level of fine, fine, top of the line, fine dining experiences that Atlanta has. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. Mm -hmm. But these are experiences that now I go out and I try them and then you go, okay, this is an eight-course meal. Mm. Okay, you can wait it, where your utensils are sitting and everything. Mm -hmm. Understand it. These are things, experiences that help you grow. Gotcha. And so a challenge is, is not only in relationships, but I challenge you to do it within your, your, your religion. I challenge you to do that in spirit, in your spiritual life, your relationship life, your friendship life, your money life, mm -hmm. hustling, doing new businesses, trying different ways to grow it. Everything is the experiences and trying things when they come to your mind. Try it. Take mm -hmm. those experiences because experiences make you great. And on the other side is the financial side. That's amazing. Y'all heard it here first from the man, Marcus. Man, I appreciate you, my brother. Man, I appreciate it's you having me. It's been an honor having you. Definitely. Uh, guys, if you need to reach out to him. Uh, him 500, all social medias. Him, you know, I was going to ask you, him 500, what make you say him 500 versus him five point million five him five thousand what 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 gave you him fortune five hundred ah got it fortune five hundred got it mm -hmm. heard it first mm -hmm. all right y'all thank y'all for tuning in it's another episode of Maybach Conversations we out.